Hi guys, in this session we are going to discuss P injection diode characteristics, right? So you might have seen the characteristic curves for a different electrical as well as electronic devices. Have you understood this, right? So basically what is characteristic curves? Why we should obtain the characteristic curves for any device? Have you understood this, right? So the prime motivation to obtain the characteristic curves is in order to know the behavior of the device. If you want to know the behavior of the device, what is the first and foremost condition to be satisfied? So we should, it is necessary to establish the interrelationship between voltage applied across the device and the resulting current flows through it. Have you understood this, right? So if we apply voltage across the device, what is the resultant? What is the result? Current definitely will flow through it. Have you understood this, right? If we establish the interrelationship between voltage applied across the device and the resulting current flows through it. And this interrelationship is conveniently displayed on the graph sheet. Right? So thus the curves applied are known as characteristic curves. Have you understood this, right? So if we establish the interrelationship between voltage applied across the device and the resulting current flows through it. Thus, the curves obtained are known as characteristic curves. The prime motivation of characteristic curves is to know the behavior of the device. Right? The next question will be raised in our mind is why we should know the behavior of the device. Right? So, and uh, if we know the behavior of the device, Right? So thereby we will, we will be having some sort of control over the device. If we want to have some sort of control over the device, definitely we should know the behavior of the device just by establishing the interrelationship between voltage applied across the device and the resulting current flows through it. And uh, currently we are working with a PN junction diode. Have you understood this, right? So PN junction diode uh, VA characteristics can be observed under two different cases. One is under forward biased conditions and the second one is reverse biased conditions, under reverse biased conditions. Let us discuss first under forward biased conditions, all right. So and uh, under forward biased conditions, what is forward bias, right. So basically bias, what is bias? Applying voltage across the device, right, or giving strength to the device. Right? What is voltage? Potential difference. If we apply potential difference across the diode, right? so definitely which results a force will be acting on the charged particles, hence it moves, which constitute electric current. That is nothing but a biasing. That means voltage applied across the device. Voltage applied across the device is nothing but biasing. Have you understood this? So then what is forward bias? Forward bias means if we connect positive terminal of the external battery to the anode and negative terminal of the battery to the cathode terminal, then the diode is said to be under forward bias conditions. Right? So if we connect like this, as simple as that, this is cathode terminal and this is anode terminal. If we connect positive terminal of the battery to the anode terminal and uh, negative terminal of the battery to the cathode terminal, now the diode is said to be under forward bias conditions, right? So if we connect like this practically, then what is going on behind the screen must be observed experimentally. Have you understood this, right? So that means if we connect like this, then so then definitely the if we apply force that means voltage across the device which results electric force have you understood this right so and uh, here diode diode means uh, what exists within the diode p the p injection diode potential barrier exists or depletion region potential barrier exists within the diode which opposes the movement of the majority charge carriers right so potential barrier. Within this potential barrier, what will be coming into the picture? Contact potential or threshold potential. 
contact potential or a threshold potential. So, which also results the force, right? So, the force due to the contact potential or threshold potential, so which opposes the movement of the majority charge carries. Hence, uh, no current as long as this potential barrier exists, no, cur no majority current will be flowing through the diode. Have you understood this, right? If you want to, that means uh, initiate, or if you want to move majority charge carriers through the pin action diode, so external voltage must be applied across it. And uh, the force due to the external potential is definitely opposite to the force due to the potential value acts opposite to the potential there. That is nothing but a power of us. Right? So technically speaking, you must say in this way only. Follow. This is general case. If we connect, this represents the practical connections. But how the process, that means if we connect like this, how the process is going on behind the scale must be observed. That is our duty. As an engineer, we must analyze how the process is going on behind the scale. If we connect like this, definitely the force due to the external potential is opposite to the force due to the potential barrier. As a result, the strength of the potential barrier gets decreased. Strength of the potential barrier gets decreased. Have you understood this? Now, the majority charge carriers move towards the junction. Majority charge carriers move towards the junction. Have you understood this? Right. right? So, this we can represent like this. That means under forward by acid conditions, the junction voltage Vj is represented as Vj is equal to Vf minus V0. This minus sign, minus sign represents something opposite. Have you understood this, right? So that means the external, the external potential, the force due to the external potential is opposite to the force due to the potential there. That is why it is represented with a minus sign. This is important for a competitive examinations. The junction voltage under forward by acid conditions is Vf minus a V0. Have you understood this? Right? So now let us draw the characteristic curves of the PN junction diode under forward by acid conditions. Right? So this is nothing but a plot of forward voltage versus forward current flows through the diode. This is plot of Vf versus If, right? So, and uh, now, so the Vf is taken along x-axis in volts and uh, If is in a milli amperes. So, Vf is in volts and If is in a milli amperes, right? So, if we join the voltage and the corresponding current, forward voltage and the corresponding current flows through the diode. So, we can observe practically this type of characteristic curves. This type of characteristic curves can be practically observed under forward by acid conditions. And uh, this is nothing but V gamma or threshold voltage or contact potential. Right? So, this is corresponding to Vsat, saturated forward voltage. Saturated forward voltage. Have you understood this? Right? So, let us discuss different cases. Have you understood this? Right? So, the first case is if 0 is less than Vf is less than V gamma. This is the first case in this region, in this region. Have you understood this? Right? So, in this region, first case, if 0 is less than, Vf is less than V gamma. In this case, what is the current flowing through it? Diode current is 0. No current will be flows through, no current will be flowing through the diode because, so, before V gamma or before contact potential, so, the depletion region exists which never allows the movement of the majority charge carriers through it to constitute majority current. Have you understood this? That is why, so the diode current is zero in this case, since the depletion region exists. The depletion region exists. This is the practical reason why it is happening like this. Have you understood this, right? So let us observe the second case. What is the second case? V gamma is less than, Vf is less than Vz. 
this region is very important for us right so vf if vf is less than sorry v gamma is less than v gamma is less than vf is less than v set v gamma is less than vf is less than v set have you understood this in this region, the potential barrier is eliminated completely. Followed. There is no potential barrier. Followed. So that means once the potential barrier is eliminated, then the majority charge carrier movement will be initiated, which constitute current through the diode. Right? So once the potential barrier is eliminated, the current through the diode must increase abruptly. But this is not happening practically. What is happening practically? The current through the diode increases exponentially. Exponential increment term they can be found practically. Have you understood this, right? So the reason behind this is why it is happening, right? So why the current through the diode not increasing abruptly? Why it is increasing exponentially? Have you understood this, right? So the reason is even if the potential barrier is eliminated completely, but the diode resistance is inseparably linked with it. The diode resistance is inseparably linked with it. Have you understood this, right? To overcome this diode resistance, the voltage must be increased. If we increase the voltage, the current through the diode increases. If the voltage is increased further, the current through the diode, current through the diode increases further. Like that, if you join all these voltage and uh, current intersecting points, right? Thereby we can object, obtain that uh, we can observe the exponential increment of the current through the diode, not abrupt increment in a current through the diode in this region. Have you understood this, right? Exponential increment. That means ID increases exponentially. ID increases exponentially. This is very important observation. So the reason behind this is due to diode resistance. Right? So, the current through the diode increases exponentially. Please remember, very important. Have you understood this, right? So, in this region, in exponential region, so the current through the diode is judged by the mathematical equation ID is equal to I naught into e to the power of V by eta Vt minus 1. I naught into e to the power of V by eta Vt minus 1, right? So, where eta is ideality factor, right? So, where eta is a ideality factor. So, and uh, eta is equal to, eta is equal to 1 for all currents, all currents for germanium. For germanium, so eta is equal to 1 for uh, all currents, whether it is small currents or rated currents or high currents, eta is equal to 1 for uh, germanium. Whereas for silicon, so eta is equal to for silicon, eta is equal to 1 for large currents. If current through the diode is very large, then eta is 1 and uh, so 2 for rated currents. 2 for rated currents. Have you understood this? In general, current through the diode always rated, that is why in general we will substitute for silicon diode eta is equal to 2 and for germanium diode eta is equal to 1. But actually, strictly speaking, eta is equal to 1 for so all currents in the case of germanium and whereas in the case of silicon, eta is equal to 1 for large currents and 2 for a rated currents. Have you understood this? And uh, I naught, what is I naught? I naught. Have you understood this? This is reverse saturation current. Reverse saturation current or thermally liberated charge carrier current or minority carrier current. Right? So, reverse saturation current, reverse saturation current or thermally liberated carrier current. Thermally liberated carrier current. This is very important. 
to be understood this, right? So, thermally liberated carrier current or minority carrier current, what does it mean? Thermal energy is only the source to generate, so minority carriers, which causes this uh, reverse saturation current I naught. Have you understood this? If temperature increases, definitely some of the valence electrons will acquire sufficient energy to break the covalent bonds. Have you understood this? And hence, uh, so minority carriers and hence are excited into the conduction band. Thus, they become free electrons, which causes current. That is nothing but, of course, they are very small in number. Have you understood this? Hence, uh, it causes very little current. That is the reason why it is called minority carrier current. The minority carrier current is nothing but a thermally liberated carrier current. But, so why it is called reverse saturation current? Correct. Sometimes in IES as well as gate examinations also, so in assertion and reasoning questions, this same question is asking like this. Have you understood this? Why assertion? I naught is called a uh, reverse saturation current. Reason. What is the reason? What might be the reason for this? Right? So these minority charge carriers are independent of reverse voltage applied across the value. Have you understood this, right? These charge carriers does not depend upon the reverse voltage applied across the diode. These charge carriers depends only on the temperature, only on temperature. That is the reason why they are called thermally liberated charge carriers. Thermally liberated charge carriers. And hence it is called reverse saturation current. Have you understood this, right? So this reverse saturation current, I naught is of the order of microamperes per germanium and uh, it is of the order of nano amperes per silica. Have you understood this, right? So I naught is of the order of micro amperes for germanium and nano amperes for a silica. The question here is I naught of germanium, I naught of germanium by I naught of silica. What is this? I naught of germanium is 10 to the power of minus 6. And I naught of silicon is 10 to the power of minus 9 nano amperes, right? So that is 1000. This way you have to observe. Have you understood this? If the engineering computer examinations, they are asking in this way, right? I naught of germanium by I naught of silicon. So they will give different options. Among the given options, what is the correct option? 1000 is the correct option. Why? Because I naught of germanium is of the order of microamperes, that is 10 to the power of minus 6, and I naught of silicon is of the order of nanoamperes, that is 10 to the power of minus 9. Right? So that I naught of germanium by I naught of silicon is 1000. If reverse means I naught of silicon by I naught of germanium, happily you can form 10 to the power of minus 3. That doesn't matter. Have you understood this? Right? So, and uh, the next case, third case is if Vf is greater than or equal to Vz. Third case, if Vf is greater than or equal to Vset, under this case, so you can observe the abrupt increment in current through the diode can be practically found. The current increases abruptly like this. Have you understood this? The current increases abruptly like this. Have you understood this? Right? Straight forward, the curve goes. Have you understood this? The current, there is no, that means in this case, in this region, you can say once the forward voltage reaches this level, then the diode current becomes zero. Zero current only will be flowing through the diode. Zero resistance only will be coming into the picture. The diode resistance becomes zero. And hence, the current increases very abrupt. Have you understood this, right? This is due to the fact that avalanche breakdown, this abrupt increment in current is due to avalanche effect. Avalanche effect. This is important for engineering competitive examinations. Why the current increases abruptly if Vf reaches this Vz level due to avalanche effect, the diode resistance becomes zero and hence current through the diode increases abruptly. Have you understood this, right? So, and next one is, it is practically observed that the contact potential, so in this region, the current through the diode, ID, increases abruptly. Abruptly. The reason is due to avalanche effect. Due to avalanche 
effect due to Abner's effect. Have you understood this? All right. So next one is the contact potential. So so it is practically observed that the contact potential is from 0.2 to 0.3 volts for germanium and 0.6 to 0.7 volts for silicon. That means what does it mean? So the potential barrier is completely eliminated for germanium at the forward voltage of the R of 0.2 to 0.3 volts whereas for silicon 0.6 to 0.7 volts. Then here the very important thing is what is the definition for V gamma or contact potential? What is V gamma? V gamma is nothing but uh, so the forward voltage at which the current through the diode increases 5% of the rated value. The current through the diode increases 5% uh, of the rated value. This is most important for competitive generations like IES as well as GATE. Right? You should know exactly accurately what is V naught or V gamma threshold voltage. Have you understood this, right? So normally people say, so V gamma is nothing but uh, the forward voltage at which the current through the diode increases. Have you understood this? Till then potential barrier exists, till V gamma potential barrier exists and hence the current through the diode is zero. Once VF reaches V gamma level, then the current through the diode increases. But uh, so accurate definition is the voltage, the VF, the VF, at which, at which ID increases 5% of its rated value, 5% of its rated value. This you should know. Have you understood this? Right? So 5% of rated value. And next one is temperature effect. How the forward biased characteristics will be influenced by the temperature. Let us observe, right? So, how the how the forward biased characteristics how the forward biased characteristics will be influenced will be influenced by temperature. Have you understood this, right? So this is another very important as well as interesting point also, right? So definitely diode characteristics will be influenced by the temperature, right? So if temperature increases, so then what happens? Let us observe this. I will draw here the characteristic curves. So this is Vf in volts and uh, If in milliamperes. If in uh, milliamperes. So, 30 degrees, this curve corresponding to 30 degrees and uh, this curve corresponding to 35 degrees centigrade and uh, this is the curve corresponding to 40 degrees centigrade. What you have observed practically from this, these curves, have you understood this, right? So, if you observe carefully, so we can conclude that if temperature increases, if temperature increases, then what happens? The potential barrier eliminates at lesser forward voltages. That means V gamma decreases or V naught decreases. Have you understood this, right? So in gate examination, how they um, one question is uh, uh, given that so if temperature increases, the diode forward by diode characteristic curves moves towards options x-axis, y-axis upwards or downwards that is the question given have you understood this right so if temperature increases what do they have observed one is v gamma decreases and uh, so the diode characteristic curves move towards y axis move towards uh, y axis this is very very important observation have you understood this right so here i will write, i will write down here if temperature increases two things can be practically observed one is V gamma, the threshold voltage decreases. And the second one is the characteristic curves. The characteristic curves move towards Y axis. Move towards Y axis. Is it clear? Right? 
so this is very important have you understood this right and uh, next one is let us observe the characteristic curves under reverse bias conditions right so under reverse bias conditions so what is reverse bias reverse bias means if we connect right so positive terminal of the battery to the cathode and negative terminal of the battery to the anode then the diode is said to be under reverse bias so i will draw the circuit here corresponding circuit this is diode so this is anode and a cathode if we connect negative terminal of the battery to the anode and a positive terminal of the battery to the cathode this is reverse now the diode is said to be under reverse bias conditions have you understood this right so if we connect practically like this then what happens behind the screen right so that means uh, if we connect practically then the force due to the external reverse bias potential is in the same direction as the force due to the potential barrier v not or v gamma in the same direction as the force due to the potential barrier as a result what happens the width of the depletion region increases width of the depletion region increases width of the depletion region increases have you understood this right so if width of the depletion region increases means then what happens right the majority charge carriers move away from the junction majority so as a result that means this result majority charge carriers majority charge carriers move away from the junction majority charge carriers move away from the junction have you understood this on the other hand so minority charge carriers can cross the junction that means the movement of majority charge carriers and minority charge carriers are always opposite in direction if majority charge carriers move away from the junction then uh, minority charge carriers move towards the junction which constitute minority carrier current or thermally liberated carrier current i not have you understood this right so that means i not flows through the junction in reverse direction like this have you understood this right so i not flows through the junction whereas if moves away from the junction majority charge carriers move away from the junction if will not be coming into the picture in this case have you understood this right so and uh, let us draw the characteristic curves corresponding to this discussion the characteristic curve says it is the plot of plot of vr reverse voltage versus reverse current ir we have to show this right so this is drawn in so in a second quadrant so ir always it is of the order of micro amperes have you understood this the corresponding characteristic curves will be like this actually so this is not exactly correct so exponential increment only will be coming into the picture in this case like this have you understood this right so as long as the potential barrier exists so what is the current flowing through the diode i not current reverse saturation current only will be flowing through the diode due to minority charge carriers have you understood this right once a junction breakdown occurs due to avalanche effect right if reverse voltage increases in a negative direction right so the charge carrier minority charge carriers increases in a cumulative way which causes junction breakdown that is nothing but avalanche breakdown right so now the current through the diode increases abruptly that means exponentially not abruptly so the reason behind this is i have already mentioned that why abrupt increment is not is not coming into the picture have you understood this because the diode resistance is inseparably linked with it that is the reason why the current through the diode increases exponentially not abruptly right so thank you